Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this graph and then track it into a live scene. Now, if you're part of the Flatpak FX crew, then you can download the project file down in the description below. And I've also included an additional bonus comp as well with another video clip and a copy of this animated graph. Now, if you're not a crew member, but you're interested in joining, then you can also check out the crew membership via the link in the description below. So I've got my clip here and I'm gonna create a new comp from selection. Now I only need a small part of this. So I'm just gonna chop off this part here and then hit end to bring my timeline in slightly. And then I can just trim this comp to the work area. So now that we've got this, we need to work out what we're gonna put into the background. Now for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create a new solid. Now, this composition is not a perfectly square. So it's it's 2048 by 1080. So instead of 91020 by 1080. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to come up with that layer selected down to pre-compose. Now this is going to be my graph. And now we can open that up and I can just delete that layer. So we've got a composition that that is the exact same resolution of whatever your clip is. And now we can start sort of creating our animation. Now I'm gonna keep it really simple here. I'm just gonna turn off the transparent background and I'm just gonna come up here and I don't want a fill for this one, but I do want a stroke. So something around sort of five pixels, something like that. And I'm just gonna draw a random sort of line here on my screen. Now you can hold shift on the keyboard if you wanna try and get those more precise, but that's just kind of the, the outline for our graph here. Next, I want to click away and I wanna create another layer, but this one I'm gonna drop down to two because we don't need it quite as prominent. And I'm just gonna draw out another simple sort of shape here. And with this one, what I'm going to do is also change the color. I'm just gonna drop this down very slightly. I can just turn that off to see how that's actually looking, but that looks fine. Then with that, what I'm going to do is I can just come in here to the contents and take that and just duplicate it and just drag this one up, duplicate it again, maybe spread these out a little bit more. Then we end up with something like this. Now that doesn't have to be exactly correct because what we're going to do is if I come over here to my text tool, what I can do is I can just sort of draw out a box something like this. Now I want my first layer to sort of start here and you can type out whatever you're going to put on your vertical axis. So for me, I'm gonna use 20%. I'm gonna come over here and make sure my character menu is selected so I can just see what I'm doing. And then what I can do is sort of move this across. And if I just shift that one down, what I'm going to do is if I hit enter, then I can write out my next number. Now to get these at even spacing, I can basically use this here to just kind of guide the spacing between them. So I'm just gonna kind of go through here. Now I'm just gonna select those and just readjust this so it all kind of lines up nicely here with my graph. And if I need to, again, I can go into all of those contents and I can take all of those paths and just basically reposition them however you need to sort of get them all to line up. So we end up with something like that. Now for the actual graphs, what I'm going to do is create a bit of a bar graph here. This can be sort of like a solid, I don't want any stroke. And what I'm going to do is just kind of draw out a box. Now if I hit Y on the keyboard, I can just take that layer and I want to reposition this anchor point down to the bottom. And if I hit S, then what I can do is come over here and just kind of animate this. I'm going to disconnect that little icon because we only want to move the vertical axes here. So I'm just gonna scale that one down to zero. So that's how we kind of get that animation. I'm just going to take both of those, right click and make them easy ease. Now with that shape layer, what I can do is I can then just duplicate that, move it across and then off center it. So we kind of get this staggering sort of animation like this. And then what you can do is if you bring up those scale keyframes and go to the second keyframe, you can make the adjustment of how high you want them to be. So the different heights. 
Now that's all that I did here in my original one to create this graph. Now you can also take one of those layers and you can just add a fill. So you can search for fill up here. And all that does is it basically just allows you to change the color. So I've just used a green and a blue. You can do whatever you like. And I've also done the exact same thing here, but on the horizontal axes, and I've given this a name. So your graph can obviously be whatever you want and be whatever measurement you want as well. This is the other graph that I've created. This is the bonus composition for the crew members, but basically I've just added in a bit of texture here, given it a bit of a glow and I've animated all of these out as well. So if you're part of that download, you can see how I've done that in that composition. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to create and animate your own graphs, then check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description below. In that, I have a whole section which goes through graphs, how to create different types of graphs, how to animate them all using different techniques. The course is aimed at absolute beginners. So even if you've never used After Effects before or you're completely new to it, then I walk you through from the absolute basics of using the program right through on how to actually create some really cool looking animations and effects. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and you, so you can watch and read all of those testimonials and you can also learn all about the course via the link in the description below. So now that you've got that, you should end up with this graph which sort of sits over the top of your video. Now we need to basically track that into our scene. Now there's a few ways you can go about doing this. The simplest way with using After Effects is just using the built-in mock-up. So what I do is I come up here to animation with that layer selected and I just come down to track in Boris Effects mocker, and then I can click this and it's automatically going to open and launch mocker. Now mocker is relatively easy to use. I do have tutorials already on how to do it, but just follow these steps. You're just gonna select your spline tool and you just wanna kind of track an area roughly where you're going to have your graph. Now just to make it simple, I would try and select an area here where it doesn't intersect the person or objects moving in front. There is a way just to put a mask around that and exclude that, but just for the simplicity of this animation, we're just gonna make sure that it doesn't uh, move or stays above that person just to make it easier. Here, I just wanna make sure that all of these are selected. If your camera's moving around doing a lot of parallax, then you should add the perspective in. For this, I'm just gonna leave them off as they are. Now, all I need to do is basically just track forward on this and it's automatically going to go ahead and track the scene. So now we can check that by simply clicking on this grid and that's going to give us a visual representation of how our track is looking. Now I can see it's not exactly perfect but it's good enough just to show you exactly how it's going. If you want to make adjustments to your thing you can delete that, you can also try and track another part or even take two parts. You could take one side from here and then draw another one over that side. But for most of the time, if you're just tracking to something solid, this is gonna work absolutely fine. Now what I can do with that layer is I'm just going to rename it by double clicking to my tracker. And then all I need to do is just save this. So then I can close Mocha. And now back in After Effects, you can go down to the tracking data. And with my playhead here back at the start, I'm just going to create that tracking data. It's gonna take that information that it's got and it's gonna automatically apply it to that layer. Then what I need to do is I'm just going to create a null object. Now there's a few ways that you can apply this information. One of the ways is using the corner pin, which supports motion blur as well. You can do that, but one of the downsides to doing that is that it is going to skew your image and you'll have to then stretch your image out so that it properly fits or matches to your comp composition resolution. That works really well when you're tracking to like a screen or something in your shot. So if you wanna do like a screen replacement or you wanna to track to something that's very similar in dimensions, then that is a really good option. For this, what I'm gonna do is use the transform properties. Now you can apply this directly to the layer. What I like to do is apply it to the null. And then what I can do is just hit apply export. So that null now has all of that information. And with my graph layer, I can parent that to that null layer. 
So now my graph is essentially tracked to that scene. I can scale this graph down and essentially it's basically stuck in the background or it should be. Now the advantage here is I can just move this graph around and it's just gonna stay tracked into my scene. Now what I can do with this is I could change say the blending mode to be overlay or even soft light, depending on the image that you're using will depend on the mode that works best for you. But basically like if I just change this to be like soft light, for instance, I can then sort of get it to blend better to my background. If I basically just try and reposition this here, what I can do is apply the power pin. So this effect, and this will allow me to sort of change the perspective to match to my scene. So I'm trying to match it so it looks like it sits better into my background. What I can also do is if I duplicate that layer, I can then create a bit more sort of punch to that thing. So I can control the amount of sort of opacity that sits over the top. Now, one thing is that you'll notice is that it doesn't get around the person who sits in front or something that passes in front. So this is where we just use a simple rotoscope. You can use mock-up to do a rotoscope. What I'm going to do is just duplicate that layer, drag it to the top. I'm just going to use my roto brush here, which is built into After Effects. I'm just going to select this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by sort of coloring in the section that I want to sort of cut out. It's automatically going to use the newest version, which is number three. And you just let it sort of track to your scene. If parts are missing or it doesn't quite get it right, then just kind of color that part in. But overall, it does a pretty good job with the latest version. So if you're on the latest version of After Effects, it's pretty good. So what you can do is once you've kind of got that, just hit this button, which is the freeze. So the freeze will basically pre-render that so that it, you don't have to keep rendering it every time you go back to your main timeline. So once it's kind of rendered, then what we can do is go back to our main composition. You'll see that it's done. It's pretty much rotoscoped out that layer. Now you can do the advantage here is with this, you can basically add a bit more of a feather over the edge. And one thing that I like to do is also just reduce that edge or expand that edge very slightly. And that will sort of adjust the edge of your mask. So it just kind of creates a cleaner cutout if, if you're kind of working your way through it. So that's pretty much it. That's how you create these sort of effects. If you can take all of these exact same steps and apply it to anything that you want to track information, you know, into your scene. So if you have some really interesting architecture, you want to put some really cool graphics up against like a wall or something, you can do that. You can just take a quick video clip or even find some royalty clips on uh, free clips online, and then just simply follow this and put your graph or text or whatever you want into your scene. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks that you can use in your own videos. If you wanna watch more content just like this, you can watch this playlist or video over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.